Hi, this is Fernando from 9 Day Fiancé, and you're listening to Bring Your Torch with Jesse and Elaine. Welcome to another episode of Bring Your Torch. I'm Jesse. And I'm Elaine. And how was your evening tonight, Elaine? <laughs> So usually when I'm late for things, I have some weird excuse like, oh, you know, I have to eat dinner. Just or like you just very... didn't feel like logging in on time, those kind of things. Yeah, whatever it is. You, exactly. But this this time, it was very interesting, actually. Mm -hmm. um, South by Southwest is going on in Austin. I decided to go out for a very early dinner. And early bird style. And I'm sitting at dinner and I realize, shit, I'm going to be late. So I text you. I'm texting you. Nice language, my by friends, the way. <laughs> my, thanks. My friend's sitting at the bar, and uh, I we're over at a table, but I see my friend, and we're, I had already said hi to her, and I'm texting you. I'm, wa I'm about to walk out, and we walk out of the we walk out, and we see Elijah Wood, and it's like okay, Elijah Wood, whatever. Ron freaks out, my husband, because he obviously loves Lord of the Rings, and I'm like, well, was he in Harry Potter? Because I don't know the oh, difference. I love right? you in Radio Flyer. <laughs> so I walk back in. I tell my friends who are sitting at the bar, and you know that's great. They're like, "Well, we we were just talking to him for a while." And anyway, do you want to go on Saturday to? They said, "Do you want to go on Saturday to Adrian Grenier's party that he always does every year for South by?" And that's a guy from Entourage for people who don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The guy from Entourage, the lead lead guy. The guy who's a movie star in a TV show, but not a movie star in real life. Exactly. Like, well, we know him, and do you want to come with us and pretty much do lines in South by Southwest at his at his party that he does every year? And I'm like, all right. So Elijah Woods is standing over there. They're talking about Adrian Grenier's party on Saturday. We're in for that. So I walk out, and I start driving home. And literally this morning, I was thinking to myself, I've been in Texas for almost three years now. In August, it'll be three years. I've never actually been pulled over by a police officer. That's crazy. You know, in D.C., Maryland, Virginia area, I was always pulled over just for random stuff, whatever it was, you know, speeding or not having your driver's license or whatever it is. They'd always find some reason and then they'd give you a ticket for something else. Right. So I got pulled over um, and basically the cop was a total... D-I-C-K, for those who uh, can spell four-letter words. And, you know, he starts questioning me and making it seem like I'm going to jail. Like, is this even your car? Where's your registration? And because I didn't change out when I got my customized plates, I didn't change out my my little sticker to, so, to say 2018. It still said 2017. He's like, well, I ran your tags. I'm not even sure if this is your car. Is this a Virginia's driver's license? My Virginia driver's license is still your address, by the way. So needless to say, the guy was like, well, you're going to go to... He just starts threatening me. And I'm just like, look, I can't deal with this. And he's like, well, I'm just going to give you a warning. You know, he kind of dumbs it down. I'm like, all right, never gave me any paperwork. But, you know, it's the promise, right? Like, so you tell yourself you've never been pulled over. And the same day you get pulled over, two minutes earlier, you see Elijah Wood get invited to a crazy party on Saturday. I don't know what to think about life right now. I can't keep up with myself. So to be clear, if you had actually followed the law and changed the tags in your car, you would have been fine. <laughs> Thank you. I knew you were going to say that. Well, you know, as our gonna... as our listeners probably know by now, I'm the responsible one. So I was sitting here, you know, five to ten minutes before the podcast you was supposed to start, responsible. sitting going, hmm, I wonder if Elaine will be on time today. And you know, then, of course, she will. Did you ever say to yourself, I wonder if Elaine will get pulled over? I was kind of hoping they just like pull out the billy club and just, me take, in jail. just take you out, <laughs> throw you in Gitmo and call tonight. Ron was like, keep your mouth shut. And I'm sitting there joking. I'm like, we didn't ever have to do this in Virginia. So, He's like, don't say a word. Well, that was a wonderful night <laughs> for you. Um, our listeners may, may be wondering the last 30 minutes you know, where we were for the last week or so. We didn't have an episode last week. And on the last episode we had, we discussed we were going to be having Kayla from uh, the challenge on our show, and we were holding yeah. off after two weeks ago. The episode of the challenge was absolutely bonkers, and we were letting things cool down. We we're going to talk to Kayla, and we actually we were all set up to do it uh, last week, and then uh, you know, and it turns out MTV kind of interceded. We don't really want to get into it because we don't want to blow up anybody's spot, um, but <laughs> but you know, for for whatever reason, um, you know, again, it was a pretty crazy episode. It just, just didn't happen, and I know Kayla really wanted to come on and share a story, 
So and it's 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 too bad. And I apologize to our fans who may have been looking forward to hearing that because uh, we were promoting it. So uh, we apologize to you. I know Kayla, you know, feels really bad and apologize to our listeners. And uh, you know, we'll, we'll have her on. Uh, hopefully, she's on another season because uh, we'll just make sure. Hopefully, that she, wink, wink. We'll just make sure that she uh, you know asks far far in advance and gets a thumbs up from MTV. So when are they going to start recording the next season of the challenge? It's basically a year-round thing, it seems like now. So probably any. You know, okay, so just you know, I, I I imagine that if I don't hear from Kayla, it's because they're filming, and that's or when you you can okay. follow, There are people online who follow people's twitters that closely enough they can see what's being or follow them and they can tell when tweeting. they're leaving. Yeah, yeah exactly. Um, but it's really become like a really. It used to be just once a year. Now it's a year-round thing. So uh, I'm I'm sure it'll be soon. Um, the other person right. we're, we're going to talk to uh, was uh, you know, from Winter Break, Hunter Mountain. And yes. then you may have noticed that it wasn't on uh, la- the last two weeks. Uh, apparently, it didn't get very good ratings the first what? episode in. And they've actually moved it to Fridays on MTV2 and starting this week, this, this Friday. Oh, okay. I thought you said they just were going to cancel it all together. No, so I think it's not really fair the way they premiered it because first of all they premiered it at 10 30 which is a weird time um if, if they had done it directly after the challenge i think it would have gotten better ratings but instead they had these challenge after shows where you know the one after oh, the, the big yeah, yeah, the big yeah. episode two weeks ago that was there was a need for that because a lot went down but the after shows uh, prior to that nothing was really there was no point to them so i bet a lot of people just checked out and didn't stick around to actually watch. i don't like those after shows <laughs> Yeah, it's just, I mean, if something big happens and it needs to be mentioned, right. um, you know, then that's fine. But uh, if, if nothing's really going on and you're just doing it to fill space, I think you're going to lose a lot of people. And, again, I just feel bad for people who are on the, the cast of Hunter Mountain. And, and I'm, I'm sticking with them. I'm, they've been liking my stuff and, and you know, giving us shouts and stuff. So uh, we're, yeah. I'm, I'm going to watch them on MTV, too. I think I don't get it in HD, so I have to watch it. You know, in in regular def or whatever. <laughs> but I think it's kind of weak that they they had two weeks in between the last episode. Yeah. And what are they gonna What are they gonna put in its place? It's gonna get better ratings. Why don't you just like run the season out and then call it quits if they don't want to do it? Well, again? they've already filmed it. Yeah. So why would they? I don't understand why not just, yeah. air something that they've filmed, even if it's a crappy slot. I mean, yeah. I mean, MTV two. It's gonna. No one's gonna watch. I mean, they're basically just trashing it, which kind of sucks. I, I think I'm gonna watch them all. But it's the same thing that happened to that show, 90s House, uh, that was on a couple months ago. It was on MTV for a couple weeks, and they just moved to MTV2 to die. All right. Well, is that where things go to die? MTV is that what you're two, telling yeah. me? Yep, yep, yep. So you mentioned your story tonight about South by Southwest. Uh, I know you're out doing stuff over the weekend. What else? Did you see anything fun or exciting? So a lot of what my South by Southwest experience was is standing in line so far last weekend. Cause I don't buy the, I didn't buy a badge or a wristband or whatever you want to call like that's it. That's a lot of what Austin is. Like you want to get food, stand in line. You want to go to South by Southwest, stand in Come line. Come back to Austin and stand uh, in line with me. Have you ever stood in a good line? Like sometimes it's just comforting to be in the line with you people. You know what drives me crazy about people in New York? And I love our New York listeners. They say stand on line. I'm like, no, no. Online is the internet. You stand in line. <laughs> yeah, you know, no one stands online. So I'm That's sorry, weird. I'm sorry. Continue with your story. Anyway, so there was one event that we really wanted to go to. It was at the Fox House, Fox, you know, Fox Sports or whatever. Dude, they were promoting you, some sort of, some sort of chef infused dinner that they were going to have for all the badge holders, and we thought we could get in without having a badge or a wristband, and so we stood in line for a long time and. The reason why we did that was because we really wanted to see Gordon Ramsay, who we were told was going to be there. And we were standing in line for about 45 minutes, and all of a sudden this black SUV pulls up. Don't ask me what kind of SUV it was. It wasn't everyone started too. screaming. <laughs> everyone started screaming. Like, I don't know. Like It looked like a, you know, a black tripped-out Tahoe, right? So all of a sudden everyone's like, oh, is that Ramsey? Is that Gordon Ramsey? And I'm just kind of standing there casually. And then he, he pops out wearing all black. It's about eight o'clock at night. He's like, well, it's actually seven fifty Cause I think the event started at 8 PM on Sunday. And apparently he was supposed to cook for everybody. <laughs> I don't know if he actually did cook for everybody, but we actually, we got to see him run inside. He kind of looked, waved his hand. Everyone clapped and was like, Oh, Gordon, you know, oh, let me blow you, you know, all that stuff. He runs inside in the back door and away from you, I would imagine. <laughs> and then about 25 minutes later, a lady comes out and says, 
sorry, badge holders are the only people that are going to be allowed in here and we're already at capacity. So on their end, it's a one for one, one in, one out. So we didn't get to go in. And so we went and we're like, well, I want to go and, and eat at a food truck. And my husband looks at me and says, I was going to go and eat food prepared by Gordon Ramsay. And now you're forcing me to eat at a food truck. So we ended up going and just having a nice casual dinner at Guess some what? Italian joint. I bet you Gordon Ramsay's food is overrated. Like, oh, look, I bet he didn't community. even cook it. He didn't even cook it. Well, it's, you know, these places, I'm sure they have good food. These, But places where you have to like, wait forever to get in. Uh, I always, I weigh the length of time it takes to get something versus the quality and what I can get for no time. <laughs> we talked about this with barbecue. I got barbecue on the side of the road in in like he in Hebron, <laughs> Connecticut, and it was like knee bucklingly good. And like, well, like, why do I have to go to Austin and wait in line for two hours to get it when I can get it here? You know, oh my god, you sound so okay. First of all, you said knee buckling good. Yeah, that's how good it was. I was, like, of... I was eating. It. I was cr I was eating on the way home. I stopped in my car and I was like ready to crash the car. I'm like, Ugh. <laughs> <laughs> It's not as good as Austin. You're delusional. Please, please. Okay. I, I think you people in Austin think your stuff is better. It's, it's oh barbecue. my god! Oh, no. All right. So m moving on. Yeah, um, let's keep it rolling. So I two Sundays ago, I went to the movies to go see Game Night. It's with uh, Jason Bateman. Uh, it's a really good cast. Uh, it's a comedy. It's basically um, a guy's brother comes and visits, and the brother is like, everything he does is always better. So he has kind of this inferiority uh -huh. plot complex. And they're also really big into games. So every week they have a game night, whether it's trivia, whether it's shoots and ladders, whether it's Monopoly, anything. A different game night every week. And his brother comes in, played by the great Kyle Chandler, who I actually have been watching lately on Friday Night Lights as I rewatch that whole series, um, goes, you know what? We're going to do something a little better this week than a regular game night. We're going to kick it up a, a notch, and tonight somebody's going to be taken, and then you're going to have to figure out who's taking them. And it turns out uh, he's actually <laughs> kidnapped, but it's not part of the plan, and they kind of go along like, like it's a joke, and then it turns out it's not. It, it, it was actually hilarious. It's probably the funniest movie I've seen in a long, long time. Wow, uh, okay. See it. So, you know, I, I see that movie at, like, I, I went in, like, at an 11 o'clock movie. I'm like, all right, I'm going to see it on a Sunday. I'll be out. I'll have my entire Sunday at, left after that. And I'm walking out, and I notice the movie Annihilation is starting right now. And I'm like, well, you know, maybe I'll just sneak <laughs> on in, you know. Police you officers. love sneaking into these movies on and, Sundays. And um, I'm, I'm just joking, by the way, if any police are listening. So but uh, so I sneak into Annihilation. It's with uh, Natalie Portman. And it's based on a, a book, the Southern Reach Trilogy. And it's, I mean, we're not a movie podcast, so we're not going to really go into it. It's really hard to explain. Uh, basically, like a, a comet or a meteor lands on Earth, and then it starts, like, terraforming the whole world or the whole area where it landed and making weird animals like an alligator with shark's teeth. And it starts moving outwards. It's a really bizarre movie. Um but I would you say, recommend it? I would recommend it. Um, it's. I mean, it's, it wasn't a I bad. Like you movie. recommend every movie. It wasn't though. a good movie. You know, it was like in between. It's actually on every Netflix right now, except for in America. It was only released in the theaters in America. So, all right. So, can I'm you get, really recommend it if it's not good and not bad? It, it, I think it's, it's interesting. Okay. I, think, I think it's interesting. I think it's worth a watch, and you and you can figure out what you think for yourself. So, right. you know, I'm, I'm leaving that movie, and it's like two thirty or something, three o'clock. And I'm like, wait, <laughs> Red Sparrow is about to start. So I'm like, you snuck into two movies on Sunday. So I'm like, okay. So I go in to see Red Sparrow. That's the movie with uh, Jennifer Lawrence, where she's Russian and she becomes like a Russian spy, like yeah, Femme Fatale. But then, see that. but then they're trying to bring her over to the American side, and you don't know what's going on. And it was a two and a half hour movie, and I would say it was about thirty minutes too long. And I was on the fence, but the end definitely made the whole movie. So I'm like, all right, I'm happy with the ending. It was a good twist. Right, well, don't tell everybody. Well, I won't. So I get out so of there. The people like working there were like, what the hell is this guy doing here all day? No, it's a big theater, so they can't tell the difference. And I didn't even all pay right. for the first movie because I use this thing, Movie Pass, where I pay like 80 bucks a year and can see a movie a day for free. <laughs> so it Or <was>. three. <laughs> <laughs> so you know, that was my, and I get out and it's like 6.45. I'm like, I gotta go to work tomorrow. That sucks. But, uh, you know, that's the price when you see three movies. I also... So how much popcorn did you eat? Did none, you eat actually. I was nachos? starving. I didn't eat for that. I was in the movies for like six and a half, seven hours and didn't eat anything. I was starving by the time it was all said and Jeez. done. Yeah. 
So um, I also this week or last week binge watched Jessica Jones on Netflix. It's another one of those Marvel shows. Um, it stars Kristen Ritter, who uh, I actually met once, and I think she'd remember me because I asked her a pretty silly question. She's from Breaking Bad. Um, she's been in a lot of things. Oh I, yeah, I, I like she was her. She's on Don't Trust the View with Apartment Twenty Three, which I love. I made I made a comment to her about her time on Veronica Mars, and she really thought that was funny. So. Um, it was good. I'm sure she would remember you, Jesse. Yeah. No one else would ask. I asked her how Steve Gutenberg and have you spoken to him lately? Because he was her father on the show, and she laughed. So <laughs> the problem with all these Marvel shows on Netflix, you know, they have Daredevil, Iron Fist, Luke Cage. But they're all too long. It's a problem with a lot of these shows on Netflix. It's 13 episodes. It could be like eight episodes, and it's fine. And by the end of it, I'm just like, ugh, are we still watching this? And you know, while I generally like these shows, they're always like you don't have to have all these episodes. Cut it down, get rid of the BS, trim the fat, so to speak. Send them an email, give them your feedback. I'm sure they'll really care what we. The Bring Me Our Torch (laughs) podcast says produce less episodes per show. Well, they'll save a lot of money and people's time if they Mm. did that. Yeah, and there's, there's a bunch of new shows I have to watch. There's, there's so many TV shows out there. I can't even go out um, and, and talk about them all. It's just – so instead what I want to – But we talk will about, talk about American Idol. Yeah. Um, so I – you know, American Idol came back. I think it's on ABC. I think it was on Fox Forever. By the way, have you seen those uh, – commer- those uh, what is it uh, – Dr. Pepper commercials with like, the little guy who's like, it's a sweet one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The, Didn't you know, they have Prince doing that? No. The guy who does that is Justin Guarini, who came in second place to Kelly Clarkson in the first season of American Idol. He had the kind really? of he had like the fro going and stuff, you know, the big thing. Yeah, I, I they started putting his name in the commercial because I'm sitting there watching a commercial, which I usually just fast forward through them, and it's I see the name Justin Guarini. I'm like, what? I'm like, well, that guy went from losing American Idol to starring with Kelly Clarkson in Justin, like from Justin to Kelly or Love Justin Loves Kelly, whatever the other oh, movie yeah. was. And now he's doing that commercial. I, I bet this commercial uh, pays a lot of money because he's done a whole bunch of them. But but he did, didn't he dress in purple in one of them and try to like sound like Prince? I think he always is like, pulling off like a, a okay, Brett, like yeah, a Brett here Michaels we go. thing or something. Brett Michaels, and then when the whole prince, because yeah. he wears purple. He wears he's, he's like like a grunge rocker, it looks like type thing. Like who came up with this idea? It's kind I don't of know. a weird thing. It is it, weird, but you it's know, catchy. Justin Gordon is getting paid, so good for him. Um, anyways, when when I heard American Idol was getting back, and we mentioned it you know, like a year ago on the podcast, I was like, you know what? I'm uh, so over these uh, shows. Uh, what, what are you uh, what, what are you doing? Sorry, we were talking about American Idol and Luke Bryan. Sorry, uh, I'm so sorry. God, that, that's the most disturbing sorry, thing I've I, ever heard. I, I'm gonna have to. I'm, get myself together. I'm going to have to just cut you off. So how podcast. amazing is Luke Bryan on America? I don't even listen to what other people say. I'm just looking at Luke Bryan. Well, I, I told my husband and he's like, you like this redneck? I'm like... <laughs> Well, your husband is from West Virginia, so it's funny for him to say that. But, uh, you know, I'm not a country guy. I really don't know anything about Luke Bryan. I actually thought, you know, Katy Perry, I, I, I used to like Katy Perry a lot. I wasn't really a fan of her new album. You know, I'm not, not to judge her. I'm not really a fan of the short hair. But I thought she was pretty charismatic on, on this show. Yeah. And, you know, and, and, and Lionel I didn't, Richie. Yeah. How do you hate Lionel Richie? He's great. No, I have no problem. I like Lionel Richie. But She's, they're uh, they're pretty, they're boring. They're you know, so vanilla. The problem All is, of them together. The just, problem I mean, is Lionel there's Richie no Simon. People. You know, there's no Simon who just like says like F off or anything. So yeah. while I thought the first episode was more entertaining than I thought it would be, because I, I thought I'm like, I'm going to watch it for five minutes and be done. And I ended up watching the entire thing. That's um, pretty dumb. I, I will probably stick with like these auditions, kind of like what I do with The Voice and these other shows. But once yeah. it actually gets to the real thing, I'm like, yeah, I don't care. And I'll just check out and, and not watch any of it. I just think the whole thing started becoming redundant once Lionel Richie kept apologizing and going up and <laughs> hugging everyone. And then Katy Perry... To be honest, I like you said, I'm not a huge fan of the hair. It's really distracting. <laughs> the only good thing about the show, I'll tell you, is Luke Bryan eye candy. So we have American Idol. We have The Voice. We have The Four. How many music or rea- you know, uh, pop shows do we Look, need? I don't think I don't think American Idol is going to last past this season. Yeah, it's uh, you, you know, I feel bad for is Brian Dunkelman. He was the uh, <laughs> other co-host in season one with with uh, oh, Ryan, Ryan Seacrest. Seacrest. They're both you know, they're both kind of like dorky turds back in that first season. And yeah. Then, and then Dunkelman was like, "I'm out of here." You know, I think they weren't paying him enough. And all of a sudden, like Ryan Seacrest is like, the most famous person in the world. Like, like that guy's like Dunkelman. Pete, I mean, his last name is Dunkelman. I mean, though. come on. I mean, he's up there with like Pete Best, who was the original drummer in the Beatles. You know, and then left when Ringo came in. You know, and then he, they were the most famous band in the world. So. <laughs> 
I love the fact that you know the guy's name though, Dunkelman. Yeah, well, how, how do you how do you not remember that name, Dunkelman? That's hilarious that you know that. You just, this pull, is why you just I do a pulled a Dunkelman. You know shit like this. <laughs> oh, I, I just can't believe. I can't believe they haven't like ever brought him back as like a you know guest. Yeah. Just, you know, throw him a bone or like, something. Whatever Come happened on. to Dunkelman? <laughs> whatever happened to Dunkel? It would be funny if Dunkelman tried out for the show and like was singing to them. And then he so just, they he have just, Ryan Seacrest in it, right? Like yeah, I yeah, heard Seacrest. his voice the entire time, but yeah. I didn't see him that much. So from what I understand, you know, I don't really pay that much attention to Seacrest, is that he's filming, uh, you know, live Regis and Kelly Lee or whatever the hell the show, you know, oh, Kelly, okay. Kelly and Ryan, and then he flies out to L.A. like twice a week and then does American Idol, or that's what's going to happen when it's live, and that's oh. insane. So right now he's was he in it? Cause sorry, I didn't even see him. I just heard his commentary. Yeah, he's you know he, what he does is he hangs out, talking to them before they go into right, they, they right. come out and he's like, oh, what happened? Give me a high five and and you know it's the same thing he always does. It's I was in and out of the show, so yeah. all I could hear was him commentating. But yeah, I mean no, it was fine. Great. But they were focusing too much on on the good stuff, not enough on the bad. So you have to have this nice balance of good singers and like stupid singers. You know, there's no William yeah. Hung or the you know the guy who was like pants on the ground, pants on the ground, looking like a fool with your pants on the ground. But, yeah, I uh, loved William Hung, by the way. Was, was, it, was, it, was it William Hung? Yeah. Uh, she bangs. She Sing bangs. Bang, she bang. <laughs> so. I love it. Oh man. Well, before we move on, I want to talk a little bit about our sponsors today. Uh, our first sponsor is Ecosia. And now, Ecosia is this awesome alternative to Google that you should all be using. I should be using it. Elaine, you should be using it. Everybody should be using it. It's an ethical way to browse the internet. Now, what does that mean? Ecosia invests their profits to plant trees and regenerate deforested lands all over the world. How awesome is that? And here's how it works. You search the web using Ecosia, search ads generate revenue, and at least 80% of their surplus income goes to planting trees. Literally, all you have to do is what you're already doing, search the internet. And, <laughs> yeah, and over 2 million trees have already been planted. And with your help, Ecosia will reach 1 billion by 2020. And they've even created a special URL so our listeners can plant trees together. We can see who of our listeners or how many of our listeners are doing it. Go to Ecosia.co slash torch. That's E-C-O-S-I-A dot C-O backslash T-O-R-C-H. You're already searching the internet. Why not plant a tree while you're at it? Awesome. This episode is also brought to you by the Super Friends podcast with Keith James. Now, Lane, I can only listen to our podcast so many times before I need to find something else to listen to. And I <laughs> finally have with this podcast. I really love it. It covers the NBA, Jackie Chan movies, and even interviews people making an impact in the community. And here's the here's the kicker, Elaine. He covers The Bachelor, including all the spinoffs. And while we love reality TV, I think we'll both admit that The Bachelor talk on this podcast really isn't up to snuff. It's you know it's definitely. Be so if you're looking to talk about The Bachelor and all of its spinoffs, the Super Friends podcast is the place to go. Uh, the show's available on iTunes, SoundCloud, Stitcher, and Google Play. The Super Friends Podcast with Keith James. Check it out. So let's get into the challenge here. The Kayla, challenge. Brittany. Yep. So, Gemma and Natalie versus Kaylee. Oh, yeah. So two ep- so we apologize for not bringing this to you last week, but we mentioned earlier why. So what yeah. do you think? So Kay- Kayla, as you mentioned, Brittany, Jemmy, and Natalie – Kind of lost her mind, and I don't. I don't think Cam was in on this. I don't think she was in on this one. Um, Natalie tried to pretend like she didn't have any involvement, and in once they started throwing her stuff over the balcony, which yeah. I thought was a little weak. Don't distance yourself after the fact. So you know you're part of the bullying. This all started from the episode before when Kaylee went with bananas and kind of screwed over Devin and, and screwed over who was kind of at that time her showman's uh, Nelson. So you know, they went out drinking one night and. Kayla kind of started getting pissed off, and they all came back, took Kaylee's bed, threw it over the balcony, then took her suitcase, like threw it over too, and probably broke like a, a table or something. So then Kaylee's losing her mind. She freaks out. They had to hold her back. Um, you know, I was gonna tell Kayla if we spoke to her that you know we love her, but I think maybe she was a tad extreme in how she handled that situation. I definitely did too, and she was kind of the ringleader in that whole situation. I wonder but if this is one that we didn't see. I mean, I, I've heard that that Kaylee she was, got a bad at it. Well, no, yeah, Kaylee was blowing up their their alliances and stuff in their game, and that's kind of what really pissed them off more so than what we saw her do with bananas. By the by the way, uh, the reason everything was at a fever pitch, we should mention, is that Devin made <laughs> one of the best moves in challenge history. He's a smart where, guy. Where he kind of just like you know took a little match. 
threw it into a forest, and suddenly it's like what's going on in California. You know, half, half the state's burning down. In that he told Nelson that he saw bananas and Kaylee kissing, which then caused Nelson to lose his mind, which then caused bananas to lose his mind, which then caused everybody to lose his mind. I mean, Nelson. I mean, uh, Devin was really the one who kind of started this and led to what Kayla and the so rest So were did. they ever actually hooking up, though? Yeah, so what Were I, Devin and Kaylee hooking up? Yeah, what they said, I, I can't remember if it was on the after show. Sorry, or not Devin. Else, was Bernandez and Kaylee hooking up? That early on in the show or in the season, uh, I don't think they showed it on air, they were playing some kind of drinking game, and if the guys won, they were able to kiss the girls whenever they wanted. That's probably not really that kind of game in the Me Too era, but... Anyway, I think the guys won, so I think Bananas and Kaylee were seen – Devin saw them kissing for like, I don't know, three seconds or something. So, you know, he was technically telling the truth, but he just kind of didn't elaborate on it. Well, and he that, made it seem like they were hooking up over a long period well, of time, he, and Natalie seems convinced that they were hooking well, up. Here's the genius in Devin. He didn't. He let their minds go go wild, and they came to that conclusion <laughs> themselves. He So he didn't technically tell a lie, but he led them, let them – come up Let with their own collusion. Yeah, yeah. So, because uh, he, he was going into the into the challenge and he really wanted to face bananas and it looked like they were going to throw in uh, Nelson or something. It wasn't going to give him what he wanted. Bananas talks a big game, but he doesn't want to go and face them. But Tony finally grew a backbone and went against his alliance member, Bananas, because let's be honest, he may be in an alliance with Bananas, but he's like seven on the number, on the alliance list, you know? Yeah. He, he's he's going to go in far beyond up uh, before someone like Leroy does. So he threw Bananas in, and uh, Devin beat Bananas and sent him home, which he said was in the greatest day of his life. Next to having a child and getting married and all that good stuff. But it, it was because Bananas would point out it wasn't a strength competition. It was like a brain thing. They had to, they had to do a screen light bulbs and stuff and getting it all on. Uh, but I think it was time for the Bananas to go. My problem with Bananas is that, first of all, he's the ultimate villain. But it's that he's been he around too villain. long. He's always – people, like, they, they're afraid of him or they think that he's, they believe his nonsense and he just skates by. Uh, I read on – I think it was Reddit saying the best thing that they could do is just have Bananas like, – like next season, have him go out first. Have like, the fall be complete and then have just like, get a – Just get rid of him. Or have like, a redemption like Bananas rising from the ashes of the phoenix. It's something like that because, it, honestly, Bananas is a big character on the show, but he's gotten a little stale in, in what we see every season. So what do you mean rising from the ashes then? Why don't we just have him go away as soon as possible? What happens? But remember when CT came back and you're like, oh, man, CT's back. And then he just kicked butt. I think Bananas, if Bananas went away for a season or two and then it was like, Bananas is back. Then yeah. I, I think that would be like, oh, but, wow, I want to see what happens now. But – that was a whole nother situation oh, with. Yeah, yeah. I, I think someone else pointed out that Bananas, uh, you can tell that his performance has gone down since the challenge basically went year round. Maybe he's not training enough. Maybe he's not allegedly look, cycling look, on, on I think stuff it's, enough. I think it's strictly karma yeah. for I what mean, he did to Sarah, and that's all it is. And so now production probably is teamed up. And so the other castmates, and they're saying, like, look, we're not going to have him get that far because of how he screwed over other people. Well, it's the more new people come on the show and the more of the old guard leave, yeah. he loses power every time that happens. Yep. Uh, and eventually uh, the people who are always there, like, you know, uh, I don't know if she's coming back, but Camilla, you know, she had such a bad last season. Oh, Some she's going to, yeah, she'll never stuff. last. Yeah, so she's gone. Um, you know, some of these people, there's an expiration date, you know, they're, they're reaching 40 and you can't, no matter how much you train, unless you're Tom Brady, who I loathe to say that, um, they can't compete with mm -hmm. people who are like 22 or 23. It's just, that's what happens to your body. So, and then this week we saw some other people return, some more mercenaries. We saw the return of Frank, uh, and Darrell. That was weird seeing Frank. Yeah. From, uh, San Diego too. He was on there for a, for a, Many seasons in a row, and then I think he kind of had like a problem with some some things MTV was doing and left. But yeah, this was his first time back. Um, also, Ash Smashley came back, and then Laurel. Um, and the competition. Well, Laurel's a beast. Yeah, well, this one, we'll get into that in a second. It just wasn't fair uh, how that one went. Not but, at all. Um, so the people going in were Brad, Nelson, Cam, and Brittany, and Brad beat Frank, and Cam beat Ashley. And what they had to do, they both started on the side of the circle, and 
you had to go to the other – kind of go three-quarters of the way around to ring a bell, and you're tied to the other person. So you're kind of pulling against each other. So uh, Cam beat Smashley. Brad beat Frank. Uh, Nelson and Jarrell were like doing it for like an hour straight. Or they had a minor break in the middle, and no one could win. So it was a draw. So – Nelson got to stay but didn't get a grenade. Uh, but then last it was Brittany versus Laurel. And Laurel's like an Amazon. She's like, you know, Wonder Woman yeah. kind of thing. And Brittany is a small little thing. And as Brittany said, we're different weight classes. So, like, she never had a chance. And it's not her fault. Not at all. I mean, if they were boxers, they wouldn't fight each other because they're in different weight classes. It's just you know, pure physics of, of you know, mass moving at a particular speed. Or if that's even correct, I don't know. It's but, the way the cookie you know. crumbled, though. Yeah, so – and then – what do you think at the end when uh, they talked about how there was a messy breakup between uh, between Nicole and Laurel, and Laurel still went over to like say good luck, and then Nicole's so like, oh, full of it if you though. Like, for me I don't more, even know what to believe. Together. Yeah, uh, t- to me, Nicole seems the kind of person who's more interested in in conquering like a challenge. Then yeah. actually, you know, I want to say that I like committing to something. Yeah, yeah. yeah that I I hooked up with this girl. I I turned this exactly. straight girl, but then doesn't really want to fall through with a relationship at all. Exactly, and, and that's a big deal because you know Nicole was the first time that Laurel, I think, I, I don't know if she admitted to herself, but at least admitted publicly that she was interested in women. So that's you yep. know, that's a that's a big thing for Laurel, where maybe not quite as big for Nicole, but I don't know. I totally agree. Well said. Yeah. So the last thing we'll talk about today is just little Vanderpump rules. Oof. Um, this is a good season, I will say. Yeah, I, I love. I actually, you can't see this. My wallpaper on my laptop is like that final scene at the end of the credits when they're all standing there and, and Lisa's sitting in front of them, you know, and they're all posing. Because uh, I'm liking this season. So that's um, your wallpaper. Yeah, I'm digging that's it. That's weird. Ew, no. You're, oh, sorry. It's not Luke Bryan, so you can you know <laughs> yes. yourself to it. Yes. Um. So. There's a big, big point of contention this episode with uh, Ariana's brother Jeremy, who I guess has been in the show. I've never really noticed. I don't think, so him. initially, I thought he was like creepy, but not creepy. Yeah. Now he's creepy again, and then now he's know. not. So he asked out Billy Lee. She's the new cast member. She's transgender. That's the you know, the big not, not her. But she line, has of a story. JJ and yes. fake boobs, so she's honestly, transitioned. Honestly, you know, not not to put down other people who are you know transitioned, but I think she looks actually fantastic. Um, for she has great, great boobs. Yeah, I mean, I, you know, if I just looked at her, I wouldn't tell the difference. You know, I don't know, I wouldn't know, but whatever, it doesn't matter. So, you know, obviously, Jeremy, like, they go out, and Jeremy's like, you know, it doesn't bother me. Well, Jeremy and, knows, yeah. Yeah, he's like, you know, you, you know, you, 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 you look at yourself as a woman, so that's what you should be treated as. So, anyways, he asked her out, and Billy Lee. Uh, told Stasi and Katie and Kristen, <laughs> and they're all like, "Really? Like, are you going out in public? He's creepy." And saying at at Katie's wedding, he was hitting on women and being really creepy. Well, he was kind of. Did you see the footage of him like following them around? But I don't think they get it. Like, I don't think they know what it means to be friends with a guy and to have a mess around with them. Do you know what I'm yeah, saying? Like, they're so- more used to being. They're approached all... by men that are just like, hey, let's go talk, not guys who actually want to be friends. And they're all lunatics, too, let's point that out. And, you know, you're at a wedding and you're drunk and, you know, God knows, you know, we all act stupid at weddings in, in the past. Uh, and, of course, this eventually trickled down to Lala that, you know, Billy told her. And then Lala mentioned it to Sandoval and Ariana. And, of course, it's Ariana's brother. She doesn't want to hear that stuff. And so that really pissed off Sandoval and Ariana. And then it came out. They were all having dinner or lunch or whatever together, happy hour, and Lala brought it up, and tension just hit an all-time sky high, and eventually Sandoval went down to Katie and, and Schwartz's, uh, I'm sure it was all timed perfectly for a reason, because uh, their apartment, because uh, Stasi and Kristen were there, and he starts losing his mind, and you know, I understand that Tom Schwartz has to defend his wife and it was their house. But I think it's kind of a BS thing, especially if you're, you know, Billy was excited that a guy asked her out, especially, you know, you never know how people may react. You know, some people are not as evolved when it comes to the transgender thing and, you know, may not be into that. So she was excited yeah. and they kind of just crapped all over but her But were brain. they taking it from a perspective of, oh, are you going to be seen in public with this guy? Or like, yeah. he's going to be going out with a transgender person or we're discriminating against you? No, or no, they... no. I think, I think they're just like, ugh, you want to, you know, you're going to go that guy they, i think they should have just been happy with for her and not well, you know, after one of these also, things also maybe it's testament to the fact that they kind of considered billy one of them right yeah. where they would just say hey you're a girl don't go out with him because he's a creep 
Maybe not trying to piss on her parade. Yeah, I don't know, but um, I, I, I think you know Tom Sandoval and Ariana acted the way they have to. I mean, if I heard someone talking that about my brother, you know, I'd, I'd be pretty pissed off too. Well, I don't know. Her brother's also named Jeremy, so mm-hmm. that's what? like the worst name in history. <laughs> Sorry to any of our listeners named Jeremy. I don't. Know Jerry or Jeremy, stay away from these people. You, you don't want any. You don't want to talk to Seinfeld at all. Is that your problem? Stay away from that's all no, I'm saying. No mice named Jerry. Have you ever known a Jerry or Jeremy? Um, I've, yeah, I guess there was a kid <laughs> up at the elementary school and Jeremy was kind of a weirdo. He ate paste. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So it was also Jax's birthday and uh, Brittany was throwing a whole bunch. They went to Worst Hooters thing. and had a huge thing. That's what I don't get, though. They're on the upstairs of the Hooters. So I, get, I understand you can rent a room. But Tom Sandoval is like you know, shaking a beer and spraying it everywhere. I'm like, dude. So we're going to clean that up afterwards. The, you know, you're not at a bar. That's what you're thinking when he had his birthday at Hooters is cleaning up the place? Well, I don't know. We have, you have a problem with Hooters? It was tacky. The Toms got to go to Vegas for their birthday, and he's at poor Hooters. It's like run down and old and ugh, no. Well, you know, if, if you like Hooters, good for him. You know, I think... Well, you like the wings there, don't you? Yeah, you know, they're okay. I mean, there are other places I like more. I mean, I haven't been to Hooters in a while, but I have nothing against Hooters. Um, you know, if that's where you Some are go. better than others. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> that's, that's where Brittany used to work at this one. Uh, she, she also put on an electric drum set. She was, like, going above and beyond. Like, I, I think uh, it was Sandoval who said, I think you know, Jack's probably cheat on her again. Maybe she'll buy him a house or something. What do you think about that? Do you think... There's still... You think she should not be buying them and doing all this rewarding bad behavior? Well, honestly, here's the way I feel. I've always said you know, I think I don't feel bad for people who date Jax when he that he cheats because he's Jax. You should know that beforehand. But I also feel that if you're gonna if you're gonna forgive somebody, I think you have to forgive them. You know, you can't forgive That's what them. That's mom said. You yeah. can't forgive them and then constantly bring it up because then you're not really convinced. That, uh, uh, right. Not doing it. So you I, might as well just call it quits. Yeah. You're like. And, and, we, yeah. and we see this episode, there's a lot of time where uh, Sheena's trying to hook up Brittany with other people, cause, which is so weird because they're all friends, but they all hate each other. You know, it's, it's so bizarre. It is really weird. Um, it's an incestuous kind of love-hate relationship. Yeah, they all sleep with each other. Off. They all hate each other. They all talk crap about each other. And then they're all friends and celebrate things. I mean, I don't know how much of that friendship is actually TV uh, and how much is real. Um, I don't. I really just don't know. What did you think about, by the way? There's a scene where Ariana is going to get, you know, some of her uh, lady hair uh, lasered off. And that was they, weird. They show her like spread eagle with the other girls like sitting there looking at it. So like, you should be a porn star. Yeah, it's like I don't. I mean, I don't know how you women did it. I think if, it was a very random scene to just I, throw in there. If I had a, if I had a guy who, a friend, a guy friend who was doing that, I wouldn't be sitting there like, "Hey, nice dick," you know. <laughs> <laughs> and, yeah, and you would. And it's not because I'm, you know, insecure or anything. It's just that's a weird thing to do, in my opinion. I don't know. You would never do that with Ron, my husband. Uh, or how about your other friend Patrick? Or uh, I don't know who are these people. No, I, I would not do that with any of them um, because you know it's it's odd. I wouldn't do it with a woman either. It's just weird. Um, hey, hey, nice, nice vagina, Elaine. <laughs> Thanks. <Glad laughs> you, you should like be a porn that. star. <laughs> <laughs> so, all right, I think that's enough for one episode. Leaving on my uh, lady yeah, part. Yeah, you, you, I'll leave you guys to think on that one for another another week or so. So, <laughs> remember to go to our website <laughs> at bringmeyourtorch.com. Uh, you know, and Elaine, you, you you let us know next episode how Adrian Grenier's coke party is or whatever. If you end up, I will there. let you know because this weekend is going to be bat. Crazy. Tell me if tur- tell me if turtles there. Oh, I will oh, let get, you get know. turtle on our show. St. Patrick's Day is going to be one to remember. Right. Well, if I even do. Until that time, uh, just remember you may have come here as a stranger, but you're leaving as a friend. We'll see you next time. I'm bringing your torch. Bye.